Revelation chapter 6 tonight. It'd be right there if you turn to Revelation 4. Revelation chapter 6. The title is Seals and the Sealed. We uh, looked last week at Revelation 4 and 5. Some things going on in heaven, worshiping the Creator and the Redeemer, as we sang there in chapter 4, verse 11. And then... uh, Chapter 5, verse 9, they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. What a blessing to think of the the time of praising the Lord in in heaven. So, uh, we've seen the the worship of the Lamb. Now we're going to see the judgment of the Lamb. Uh, This is a strange expression. You You don't think of lambs as being very fierce. Uh, but I'll tell you what, this, uh, the Lamb of God is, can be very fierce. And on the one hand, you see the holiness of God. On the other hand, you see the sinfulness of man. And I, personally, I don't think we really understand the depth of either one. I don't know that we, we can, particularly with the holiness of God. But chapter 6 starts the section of, of judgment on earth. I've given you some notes there. Uh, those are basically from uh, Wilmington's notes on, on the Bible. And... Uh, they go from chapter 6 to 19, basically the, the tribulation time. And I thought you might find that, that helpful as we uh, go through these chapters. But let's read chapter 6 to start with. Revelation 6. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a, a bow. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast saying, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the field, I'm sorry, of the earth. When he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. The great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? We just just stop reading there. Uh, Those last verses express that, the the, the wrath of the Lamb. Um, He he starts talking here about, we'll use the word retribution, God's, God's judgment. And remember, it's the Lamb that's opening these seals. And as he opens them, different things happen. We don't really know the the timeline. It sounds like it's boom, 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 but I don't think it is. I think there's some some time involved. Um, And and the first one, uh, I believe, is is the Antichrist, the one that comes on a white horse there. It's a a false Christ. Later on, Christ will come on a a white horse, but uh, this one has an empty bow and a crown. I wouldn't be surprised if people at that time weren't saying, 
you know, uh, we, we can really have peace now because all those troublemaking fundamentalists are gone. Now, those people that were so antisocial about marriage and you know, all those things, uh, you know, we, we'll have peace. Uh, so here's, uh, I believe, the, the Antichrist is the first thing. Then the second one, he's very, very plain. He, he says the second one is war. Uh, this one in verse 4 has a sword. It gives him a sword. Um, uh, the third one and the fourth one are famine and death. And just in a practical level, those often follow war. You know, after a big war, a lot of things are destroyed and, and, and there's famine and disease and so on. Well, this is not just a natural thing. This is God's judgment uh, on the earth, uh, God's retribution. And uh, you know, as, as you see this, it just reminds us of God's attitude towards sin. You know, nowadays, we, you know, people think, oh, you know, I can sin, doesn't make any difference. I remember a girl some years ago saying, she had sinned and, and she had repented you know, so earnestly, and, and she said she was kind of tired of that. You know, she'd sin again and, and, and repent earnestly, and, and she, she did. She just got tired of it. She quit repenting. <laughs> she quit doing it. Uh, but there's coming a day when God's judgment will fall. And then in the, in the next part of the chapter, you see two responses to this. One is the martyrs, and the other is, we'll call them the earth dwellers. Uh, verse 9, he talks about uh, after the fifth seal, he saw the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. I believe these are people who are saved during the tribulation and, and then are killed as, as a result. I mean, that happens now. I can't imagine what it will be like then. And their response is avengeous. Interesting when you, when you look at it there. It's not, I don't think it's so much that they're bloodthirsty. They're just looking. They're not so much saying, will you do it? It's, when will you do it? <laughs> and they know it's coming. And they're, they're looking forward to God's justice and God's judgment. Uh, so their, their response is avengeous. The, the sixth seal has to do with the, the next group of people. And with the sixth seal, you, you might just say chaos comes. But uh, these people are not Christians. These are just all the, the people of the earth. He names all different kinds of people. So one commentator said, in that day, the most valuable piece of real estate will be the holes in the ground and, and the caves. That's what people are going to want. Um, and their response, these earth dwellers, non you know, people who are in rebellion against God, is hide us. Now, who does that remind you of? When they sinned, Adam and Eve. Exactly what they did. Oh, well, let's hide. <laughs> we, don't want, we don't want to be around. Uh, well, there's, there's no repentance there. These are not people who are saying, oh, we're sorry we sinned. They're just saying, well, we don't want to, to stand before God. And if, if you look in Matthew 24, you'll see that uh, these uh, seals are basically the same as what Jesus teaches there in, in Matthew 24 uh, when he talks, uh, in, for instance, in verse 5 about the false Christs. And then uh, wars in verse 6, uh, famine in, in verse 7, death, uh, martyrs in verse 9, deliver you to be afflicted. Um, and, and then just, just follows a, along with the same pattern that, that Jesus gave there. So you, you see in, in chapter 6 the retribution and the response that begins uh, with both the martyrs and the dwellers on the earth. Well, then chapter 7, if you've looked at all at that outline I, I gave you there, is a parenthesis or an interlude between the 6th and the 7th seal. It's interesting, a couple times this happens in Revelation where you get to the 6th one and, and there's kind of a little pause where he says and tells us something else. Uh, so let's look at chapter 7. This is about redemption. We've got three R's tonight, retribution, response, and, and redemption. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. 
And they were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Nephthalim were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Manassas were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed twelve thousand. The tribe of Benjamin were sealed twelve thousand. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. He said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Pretty encouraging, that one. Uh, he, he talks there about Jews that are sealed. And he's very specific, isn't he? He doesn't leave out any tribe. It's exact number of people. Uh, I want you to notice um, chapter 14, verse 4. I want you to see something about this. There's several passages of Scripture in Revelation that are particularly used by the cults. This is one of them. They like to say, oh yeah, that's us. Well, Revelation 14, 4 says, talking about verse 3, you can see that's the 140 and 4,000. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. He tells us a couple of things about these people. Number one, they're men. Number two, they're virgins. Uh, these are not just any old person, man, woman, and child. Uh, he's very specific. And uh, it's often been said, we think these are going to be 144,000 Apostle Pauls. <laughs> you know, very earnest, godly men going around witnessing to people. And it's going to be an, an interesting time. A sealed Jews. Well, then in uh, 9 and following, there's saved Gentiles. Now, notice the difference between these two groups. The one, a very clear number. Yeah, he says the total number, he tells the number from each tribe. Now, you can do all kinds of studies about the different tribes that are listed, and, you know, there's all kinds of things we're, we're leaving out. But um, with the Jews, they're numbered, they're sealed, they're on the earth. With the Gentiles, they're, they're not numbered. Did you notice that? A great multitude, which no man could number. That doesn't mean God couldn't number them, but uh, you know, just more than you could, you could even hardly imagine. And they're standing before God in heaven. And John's kind of puzzled. The angel asks him, who do you, you know, basically he's saying, who do you think these are? And if, if we'd have been there, I think we'd have seen him go, <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> and uh, he tells him uh, that they, who, these, who these people are. And God's description of, of these people is, is encouraging because uh, you know, we expect to be in heaven someday. Uh, one of the things that, about them is you see that they're accepted. They're received by God. They're standing at the throne. Uh, they have white robes. They're, they're calling out, salvation unto the Lord. Uh, I think these would be what, going the wrong way, uh, what First John called overcomers. Uh, these, these are saved people in heaven. First uh, John talks about, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 
Another thing you see about them is they're, they're joyful. You know, they're praising and, and worshiping the Lord. Uh, and as well, you see that they're, they're rewarded. Uh, verse 15, they're before the throne of God. They serve him. They get to, get to serve the Lord. And I found it so encouraging reading those last few verses. They're provided for. Uh, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The lamb, verse 17, shall feed them, shall lead them. God shall wipe away all tears. Uh, they're blessed. They're rejoicing. They're rewarded. So, in uh, chapters 6 and 7, we see the seals and we see the sealed. You know, those that are, are sealed before God. You know, that 144,000. In chapter 8, we're going to see the seventh seal opened. And we'll continue with that next week. Uh, and basically, the seventh seal are the seven trumpet judgments. And believe it or not, God's wrath increases. It, it kind of keeps building, building as you go uh, through the, the book of Revelation. But one of the things that is good to keep in mind is that in his wrath, God remembers mercy. That's a, that's a quote from Habakkuk uh, 3 and, and verse 2. In his wrath, Lord, remember mercy. And uh, you know, it's a blessing to know that our God is both holy and good. And as, as you go through the, the book of Revelation, one of the things I, I did then when I'd finished just the real basic look at the chapters was, well, what do we see about Jesus in these chapters? Now, you might find more, or you might find less, but uh, at the beginning of chapter one, you, you see that he alone is worthy to judge. You know, they, as they looked for someone who could open the seals of the book, nobody except Jesus. He's the only one. And in uh, chapter 6 and, and verse 1, he, he begins to, uh, to do that. In chapter 6 and verse 10, you see that he is holy and true. How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that, that dwell on the earth? We can count on that. Jesus is holy and true. In, in verse 17, you see that he hates sin. The great day of his wrath has come. It, it, I mentioned, you know, the wrath of the Lamb. It just almost doesn't, you just can't hardly compute that. And yet, uh, we need to understand that the wrath of God is because of his holiness and because of his understanding and hatred of sin. I think it's Psalm 711. It says, God is angry with the wicked every day. God is never okay with our sin. And we need to understand he's holy and true. He hates sin. Uh, he will judge sin. Um, in, in this place, in verse 17 of chapter 6, it's present tense. The great day of his wrath is come. We're not in the great day of his wrath now, but it, it's, it's coming. It, at that point, it, it is come. And Romans, he said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. We get so caught up with our judgment and our vengeance, we forget we, that's not our place. We're not worthy, but he is. And he'll do exactly what needs to be done. We don't want to be on the wrong side of that equation. Chapter 7, verse 3, you see of Jesus that he will keep his word. Um, they've, they've sealed these servants. They're, they're going to be, I guess, the future at that point. Uh, they're going to be sealing them. And so, you know, don't hurt the earth. You know, God is not going to get things out of order. He's, he's not going to make any mistakes. Uh, God will keep his word, and God will keep us. Now, we're not the 144,000, but the Bible talks about how we're sealed by the Holy Spirit, and, uh, you know, we have, we have God's, uh, God's promise on that. In uh, chapter 7, verse 10, they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God. And, uh, you know, that's exactly what we have from our God through the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll keep his word. He keeps us. In verse 14, his blood cleanses us. Says, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, that's true for all time. And sometimes people ask, well, how did they get saved in the Old Testament? By the blood of the Lamb. And they had to picture it in the future. Jesus would come. And what a day it must have been when John was able to say, behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Wow, you know, the whole of time is focused right there. There's Jesus. 
And that's the Jesus they're talking about. There's only one. And what a blessing as we can see this and how it, how it relates to the world that, that we live in. His blood cleanses us and our future is with him. Now, these last few verses, they talk about how they, they serve him and uh, they'll hunger no more. And he's, he's in the midst of the, the throne and feeds them and leads them and uh, they'll wipe away tears from their eyes. You know, that's, that's the future we have with the Lord. He says much the same thing later on in Revelation, you know, no more tears, no tears in heaven. And you know, what, a, what a blessing it is that we can trust our future uh, to the Lord. There's probably more things. You have something that you've seen as we've gone, gone past and could point out to us, but lots of good things about the Lord Jesus. You know, this is not a time for questions. I'm sorry. This is the time for if you saw something about Jesus there, but I'll take your question afterward. Let me do that, okay? All right. Appreciate your, your attention on that. It's kind of a little different way of we're approaching uh, the book of Revelation on Wednesday nights. Um, we're just having a, a quick look at the basics and uh, trying to see uh, what we can of, of the Lord Jesus, the revelation of Jesus Christ, and uh, reading it out loud together. Let me mention a couple.